Hello, um, my name is Ross Collins. Thank you so much for joining me here at On Fife Virtual Library. Liber, liber, yay, liber, li, library, library, library. Oh, how do you say this? I mean, library, yay. Who came up with library? Yay? Who came up with that? It's a very strange name. You try saying library, 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 yay. I don't know. Anyway. It makes library sound more fun. I don't think it does. I don't know. It's very strange. Anyway, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. As I said, my name is Ross Collins. I'm an author and an illustrator of children's books. Um, probably best way for you to know who I am is to see some of my books. You might recognize some of them. So here's some of them. Uh, Robot Rumpus. Anybody know this one? Yeah. It's quite good fun. Uh, what does an anteater book eat? What does an anteater eat? Do you know what an anteater eats? Yeah, it's definitely not what you think it is. It's something different. Um, this zoo is not for you. No, it's not. Uh, what else? This one. Some people have heard of this. There's a bear on my chair. This is mine. I did this. I wrote it and I illustrated it too. We'll talk a little bit more about this one later. Very recent one. I am a tiger by the lovely Carl Newson and me. And two books that we're going to talk about today. There's a mouse in my house and this is a dog. So let me tell you a little bit about me. So I'm an author and an illustrator. Uh, I'm Glaswegian. Uh, I don't live in Fife, sorry about that. Although I've visited Fife many, many times uh, doing lots and lots of fun school visits. And I've had great times in Fife. And I'm really sorry that I've not been able to get there this year um, because of this, this virus thing you might have heard of. Uh, but we're gonna do lots and lots of cool virtual events through the libraries. Uh, this is just one of them. There's lots more that you can tune into. Um, so I love coming to Fife and I love going to schools. Um, but mostly I love drawing and I love telling stories and I love books. Uh, I have written... How many books have I written now? I've written about 20 books, something like that. Uh, but I've illustrated about 130, quite a lot more. Because um, I think I've always been a drawer. I love drawing ever since I could hold a pencil. I've been drawing, 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 drawing. And uh, I love stories. And so I've been doing this for quite a long time now. I'm not gonna tell you how long because that would tell you how incredibly old I am, ancient. Um, but I just love making books. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of books that I've done today, some of my more recent books. And we're also gonna be doing some drawing. So if you want to draw along with me, I am going to be drawing here on this elaborate setup. You can draw on paper or pads, any sort of paper you want, any sort of pencils, pens, crayons, anything you like. So if you want to draw along with me today, then go grab yourself some paper and pencils. Probably the best thing for you to do is to pause. Just pause this now, okay? Go and get your art materials and then come back and join me because I can't wait for you. Because I mean, could be here for ages. I mean, goodness knows where your paper and pencils are. They could be in the loft. I don't know. So pause now, come back and then we'll do some drawing in a wee while. Okay. Have they gone? I think they've gone. Right. Okay. Are they back? They're back. Excellent. Okay. So. We're going to talk about two of my books today. Um, first one I'm going to talk about is this one. This is called This Is A Dog. It's not actually called, it used to be called My First Animal Book, but somebody has crossed that out and scrawled This Is A Dog. Hmm. Who could that have been? Hmm. I wonder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a wee bit of This as a Dog. I'm not going to read you all of it because I'm not allowed to. No. Publishers don't like authors reading the entire book uh, on video because if they do, 
the publishers worry that nobody will run out and buy the book because they thought, oh, I've seen it all already on a video. So publishers only like you to read some of the book. So I'm going to read you a bit. And then maybe if your teachers or your librarians or even your parents might have a copy of the book, you can always buy the book, uh, then you can see the rest of it later. OK, but this will give you a taste of it. So it's called This is a Dog. You know how you've got a book plate at the start that says this book belongs to? So this one's got one and it says this book belongs to and somebody has scrawled in a dog. Who did that? Now. Starts off nice and simple. This is a dog. It's definitely a dog, isn't it? Because it's a My First Animal book, isn't it? And those books, they're just about animals. An introduction to all the different animals. This is a cat. But hang on. Who's the cat spotted coming in the side of the book? Hmm. Who's this chap? Next animal. This is a monkey. But wait, who's that? Hmm. Monkey's looking a wee bit perturbed, isn't he? Hmm. Next animal. This is a rabbit. Oh. Okay, here he is, all the way in, lapping up the limelight. The rabbit is not pleased at all. This dog is up to shenanigans. This is a squirrel. Hang on, where's the squirrel? Oh, there it is. Hmm, halfway up the wall, being chased by the dog. This dog. This is a crocodile. Oh no, hang on. Somebody scored out crocodile and written in dog. Who might have done that? Hmm. Crocodile look pleased about that? No, he does not. Here's a good place to end. This is a giraffe. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. Who's peeing on the giraffe's leg? And it goes on. So I'd encourage you, go get the book and you'll find out what happens to the dog. Do you think he gets away with it? Do you think he gets away with wrecking this book for everybody else? Hmm. You have to read it to find out. The idea for this book came about when I have a very young son. He's five, my son. And so about three years ago or more, we were reading him those books at bedtime. You know those books? This is, the, this is a dog, this is a cat, this is a monkey, this is a pig, this is a giraffe, oh, you know, and it's just all the animals. Now those are really important books for little kids. Really important. But uh, for the parent reading the books, oh, they're boring. They are super, super boring. So I was reading it and, and I thought, I wonder if anybody's kind of mucked around with this kind of changed it because this needs mucked around with and I thought I'm just the man to do it nobody else had done it so I thought how about an animal book where it's kind of wrecked by one of the animals one of the animals just takes over and I thought hmm a dog yeah a dog would be a good idea because dogs get up to all sorts of mischief in fact funny story while I was writing the book or while I was illustrating it I am um, our dog Hugo is a big chocolate Labrador <clears throat> and um, one day I went out, left Hugo in the house for an hour or so and when I came home I'd left the artwork to this as a dog lying on the sofa in my study and um, we've got quite a few sofas and beds and chairs around the house that Hugo can lie on if he wants to. And all of them were empty. None of them had anything on them apart from the sofa in my study, which was covered with my beautiful unfinished artwork. 
And uh, guess which sofa Hugo decided to lie on with his big muddy body? Yes, that one. Oh, and I was, oh, I was so angry. It was untrue. You wouldn't have liked to see me. I made the Hulk look fairly mild-mannered that day. And, uh, oh, I was super angry at Hugo. But afterwards, and after I thought about it, I thought, well, this is a book about a book that's being ruined by a dog and it's being ruined by a dog. So that is the meaning of irony. Here's a wee picture of Hugo. There he is. I decided to dedicate the book to him because it's a good story. So, shall we draw a dog? I'll show you how to draw my dog out of the book, shall I? Okay, so you got your pens, papers, pencils, crayons, whatever you like. Yep. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do this in black and white. You can add colour later if you like. I'll just do it in black and white just now. So I'm going to start off with a head. So I kind of think of the side of a dog's head as being a bit like a, a set of stairs. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. So if you start over on the left hand side, go like that. So that's one step, then you go down, and then look, there's another step, and then you go down. So it's like a set of steps, do you see? But that is the side of the dog's head. If you add the nose here, it becomes more obvious. There you go, big black nose. And he's got his mouth, and he's got a kind of a cheeky smile, this dog. And I'm going to draw his chin. Now, I should say that I draw quite fast, because I've been doing this for quite a long time. I've been practicing. You probably don't draw quite as fast. so. If you think I'm drawing too fast and you can't keep up, then just pause the video, okay? I can't wait around for you, you know. Okay, so. Kind of floppy head like that. One of his eyes there. One of his eyes there. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, and let's uh, draw his ears. So, he's got quite big pointy ears. One of them here. That black up there, I think. And then the other ear is kind of a floppy ear because he's kind of mischievous. He's got kind of floppy daft ears. So here's the other one here. Kind of flopping over. I think dogs look best with patterns on them. So I'm going to, I gave my dog pattern on his face like this. Kind of looks a bit like eyebrows. Did you know? Did you know dogs didn't used to have eyebrows? When dogs were first around they didn't have eyebrows and then they started to hang around with man quite a lot and they needed to let man know what they were thinking about and what they were feeling, what they wanted. And they had to develop ways of doing that. And one of the ways they developed of doing that was developing eyebrows. They never used to have eyebrows, but their eyebrows tell us how they're feeling. If they're sad, if they're alert. It's very smart. You won't find a cat with eyebrows. I'll tell you that for nothing. Right. So there's my dog head. Now we'll do the body. So... He's going to be sitting, so here we go. So we've got a kind of a fluffy chest, and then not too far down, let's draw some front legs. So there's the front leg there, nice big paws, and then there's the other leg there, other paw. There we go. Are you keeping up? Okay, now let's draw his back leg. Now his back leg, if he's sitting, you can draw it like a big letter C. So, ba -ba -ba -ba, like that, see? It's like a big letter C. And then you attach a paw to the bottom of it. Ba -ba -ba. Like that. You can 
see a wee bit of his body behind his other leg now you should have to join it up oh collar yeah dog should have a collar shouldn't he so let's stick a collar on him there we go and now he's back so that goes about like that down right there there we go not bad what am i missing what am i missing tail he needs a tail so bendy tail like that and as i said i reckon he should probably have some spots on him so let's go spots puppy dog Come on, your back leg. There we go. It's got some on his tail, too. There we go. That's my dog, and this is a dog. I put little marks under his feet, because if you put wee marks under his feet like that, it makes it look like he's sitting on something. I think I'll colour his collar in, too. red colour. You can colour your dog in any way you want. But not in my time. No. i got to get on. Okay, so do you like that? Is that a good dog? It's a pretty good dog. Okay. So, moving on. Second book that I want to talk to you about. I'm going to take this down because I'm going to put up another piece of paper and we'll do a wee bit more drawing in a wee while, okay? So... Down you come, up goes drawing paper number two, there we go, let's stick that on there, you see that okay? Yeah. Excellent. So that was This is a Dog. Now the second book I was going to talk to you about today is my newest book. There's a mouse in my house. There he is. Now some of you might remember a book that came out about five years ago called There's a Bear in My Chair. Now There's a Bear in My Chair, if you don't know it, is a book about a mouse who comes home. I think he just snips out for five minutes. And when he nips out, this guy spots that the mouse's chair is empty. And when the mouse comes back, he discovers mm, there's a bear in my chair. Mm. And he's not very happy about this. And he says, he is so big it's hard to share. We do not make a happy pair, a mouse and bear with just one chair. He's not happy about this at all. So the mouse tries lots and lots of different ways to get the bear off of the chair. And of course it's a tiny wee mouse and a great big bear, so he doesn't have much luck. It's very hard to get a polar bear off your chair. Do you think you could get a polar bear off a chair? I doubt you could. Unless, of course, you are a polar bear. Are you a polar bear watching this? Maybe you are. I mean, Fife has some interesting inhabitants. I wouldn't be surprised if there's polar bears living up there watching videos. Um, it is quite cold. Anywho, he tries lots and lots of different ways to get this annoying bear off of the chair, and he fails. And eventually, not to give the ending away, but eventually he just explodes in rage and then he gives up. And he goes off, he marches away, and when he marches off, the bear gets off the chair. No fun for the bear anymore. So the bear gets off the chair, looks around, mouse is gone, and the bear heads back home. There he goes, the bear lives in an igloo. And when the bear gets back to his house, the bear discovers... Hey, there's a mouse in my house. And that's the end of There's a Bear in My Chair. 
Now, when this book came out, it was rather popular. It sold quite a few copies, it's done pretty well for me. Um, and even if a book's not that popular, people, when they meet me, do tend to ask me, when are you going to write a sequel to whatever book? Because everybody wants a sequel. And um, sometimes I've done sequels, sometimes I haven't, it just depends. But I got asked a lot, when are you going to do a sequel to There's a Bear in My Chair? Everything I ever did, all the, all the school visits and library visits and all of that, so many people would say, when's There's a Mouse in My House coming out, Mr. Collins? And um, the funny thing was, was that they didn't even ask when's, there's, when's the sequel to There's a Bear in My Chair coming out. They said, when's There's a Mouse in My House coming out? Because they knew what it was going to be called even before I'd even thought about it because that's the end of this one there's a mouse in my house so I thought about it a little bit I didn't really want to do a sequel straight away because I tend to find that uh, books that have sequels that come out really really fast the sequels don't tend to be anything like as good as the first one because there's not been as much thought or care put into it I don't think um, so I didn't really want to do it. And the other thing was, I did. I thought a little bit about it. And Bear in My Chair works really well because of that rhyme. Bear, chair, fair, dare, scare, pair, wear, tear. There's lots and lots of great rhymes for bear and chair. There ain't so many good rhymes for mouse in my house. I mean, mouse, house, louse, spouse, grouse, nouse. That's it. I mean, there's really not many. It's not a good rhyme. I'm not going to get a whole book out of it. And when I thought about that, I thought, oh, there's no point really in thinking about this. So I just kind of let it go and I didn't really think about it. But I kept on being asked by children, when are you going to do a sequel? And then eventually, <clears throat> eventually I was in a library in uh, Guernsey, it was, of all places, and there was this little red-headed girl. And she... She really, really wanted a sequel to Bear in My Chair. And she went on and on and on at me about it. And I thought, oh, do you know, maybe maybe I should just think more about this and see if I can do it. So I thought about it and I thought, well, if it is about the mouse being in his house, the, the really nice thing about Bear in My Chair is about the relationship between the bear and, and the mouse. And the bear is the one that's in control and he doesn't give a jot what the mouse is doing. He doesn't care at all. And the mouse is the one that's going bananas. And I thought, well, what might work really well is if you swap those round. And it's the mouse that's now in control. And the bear is the one that's going bananas. And I, I thought, yeah, actually, that would be lots of fun to draw. Because I got so used to the mouse being the wee angry one that I thought if I make him the one that's in control and the bear who's the one that's in despair, that would be lots of fun actually. I could enjoy drawing that. And then I had the problem of the rhyme. So I thought, uh, right, okay, let's just lose the idea of it has to rhyme with mouse because it's just not going to happen because there's not enough rhymes for a mouse. I thought I'll pick another rhyme and I'll frame it around. There's a mouse in my house at the beginning and then I'll do the other rhyme. So I came up with a a rain that worked. So I'll read you some of Mouse in My House, shall I? Only some of it. I'm not allowed to read all of it. But look, if you like it, please go out and get yourself a copy. There's a mouse in my house. So at the start of Mouse in My House, the mouse is seen unpacking a big box full of his stuff. And he is moving it into the bear's house. Does the bear look pleased? No, he's not. And at the start, the bear says, There's a mouse in my house. Hmm. Mouse looks quite pleased with himself now. There he is. 
How he got in, I'd like to know. He's unpacked all his stuff just so. That rodent can't live here. Oh, no. I'll tell him that he has to go. So there we go. So he's put up all his pictures. And the bear is not very pleased with having all these mousy pictures up in his house. He'll tell him that he has to go. Would you believe it? He said no. I'll chuck him out with one quick throw. But now that he's learned Taekwondo, my body aches from head to toe. Oh, no. The mouse knows Taekwondo. And the bear is flying out the door. So, the big bear can't get rid of the mouse easily. He's going to have to think of better ways to get rid of the mouse. There's lots of places he could go, from Luxembourg or Mexico to Timbuktu or Borneo, but he just doesn't want to know. Look at all those lovely places that the mouse could go. He's showing them all these postcards. He's got the globe out. But he's packed his bags for him, gotten plane tickets, but the mouse... Yeah, Mouse is quite happy where he is. Our taste is not the same, although he wears nice boots and fine chapeau. His cape is swell, but even so, why won't this mouse say cheerio? Oh, he does admire his outfit. And who wouldn't? What a lovely outfit. Look at that cape and hat and ooh, fine boots too. He's got a wind machine on and on and a big arc light. Mm. The bear is not happy. He may be small, but even so, he eats just like a buffalo. Just where he puts it, I don't know. He's left me one pistachio. Wow, that mouse can really eat, can't he? For such a small fella. And look, the bear is one pistachio. That's a good rhyme, pistachio. At night, he dances to and fro, to soft rock on his stereo. He likes to put on quite a show. When will I sleep? I do not know. Oh dear. Look at the mouse rocking out. It's a nightmare. And then this spread, we turn the book round for. He's made my bathtub overflow. It flooded the room down below. So now I'm soaked from head to toe. That's it. I'm done. He has to go. Whoop. Oh no. It's completely flooded the room down below. Oh, can things get any worse for the bear? But wait. There's a knock on the door. Who's that? But who is this? I'd like to know. Some folk are outside in the snow. But who'd come here to say hello? Hang on. Don't open that. Oh no! Who's outside in the snow? You will have to get the book out of the library or buy it to find out, I'm afraid. Sorry. So what do you reckon? Do you like it? It's quite good fun. I really enjoy drawing the bear and mouse in this one. Shall we draw the mouse? I think we should draw the mouse. So, I have my stumpy pencil. Have you got your stumpy pencils? Okay. Now, the mouse is very confident in this picture, so I think head, head of head, held high. Like that. Looking very pleased with himself. So there's his little nose. Cheeky wee eyes. And a big smile. And there's his big ears. Like that. One behind. Now he's 
got a little round head. Oh, he needs some whiskers, doesn't he? Yeah. Stop, stop, stop. All mice need whiskers. No. I think I'll put one of his arms. He's got little arms. Kind of like that. And I'll put the other one on his chest. As if he's saying, It is me, the mouse. Ta-da! And there's his jumper. There we go. He's got quite a little round body, so keep him quite round. Don't make him tall and skinny. Let's draw his little tummy. He's got his wee tummy coming out. And then, hang on, little legs. One here. One there. Tiny bee legs he's got. And we feet too. One little foot there. And then his other foot kind of coming forward like that. Remember those little lines underneath his feet? Like that. There we go. What are we missing to make him a mouse? Tail. It's a tail. There we go. There it is. Cool. Now, the mouse has a very particular pattern on his jumper. Now, I came across this pattern because originally the bear in the book wasn't going to be a polar bear, he was going to be a brown bear. And then I started to think about the colours that I wanted to put in the backgrounds and how they would be nice bright colours. And I thought, if I'm putting bright colours in the background, then if I make it a brown bear, he's not going to stand out very well against these colours. And I thought, well, if I make the bear a polar bear, I make him white, then he will really stand out. White will stand out really nicely against all these colours. So I made him a polar bear. And when I made him a polar bear and realised this is this book is set somewhere cold, I thought, well, the mouse, mouse has to wear a jumper, doesn't he? So that's why the mouse is wearing a jumper in the book. And the pattern on the jumper... The pattern is kind of based upon the patterns that you got on jumpers in Iceland and Greenland. Which are very cold countries. You think it's cold here in Scotland? You should go to Iceland and Greenland. Super cold. This pattern kind of changes to be honest. Every time I draw it, it looks a little bit different. I mean, I keep it the same in the book because it kind of has to be the same in the book. It would be very strange if every time you turn the page it looked different. But when I'm drawing it just for myself or if I'm drawing it in schools or library visits, pattern changes. Let's get a little red nose. A red cheek. Because this pattern changes all the time, we thought it would be fun to do a little competition with you guys where you can have a go at designing your own jumper for the mouse. Would you like to do that? So if you want to do that, then there's going to be details after this video and they'll tell you how you can get involved with the jumper designing competition. That'd be lots of fun. And I'm really looking forward to seeing all your crazy designs because I think some of you guys are going to come up with something way better than that jumper. Okay, so there's a challenge for you. Okay, so I'm afraid that's all the time that we've got today. But I've had a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. 
I hope you've enjoyed all the drawing and some of the stories that we've done. And I want to encourage you to keep on reading, keep on reading all those books uh, through this funny time that we've been having and when you're not at school and when you can't get to libraries then there's still plenty of books to be had. I'm sure you've got books in the house. You can buy lots of books online and in the shops when they open up. And uh, books and reading and drawing and writing are a great way to occupy yourself in times like this. I know when I was a kid, I spent so much time writing and drawing. So much time drawing, especially. So, you keep yourselves occupied with books and I hope you're all good and I'll hopefully see you again soon. So, take care guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.